All right, everybody, welcome to the Day Porto Show with Eddie and Company, presented by Trade Zero. I use Trade Zero, Eddie. I'm going to come right off the bat and say I just, just run around doing pizza reviews or out in Jersey like 40 minutes. I'm fucking tired and I don't feel good. Other than that, I'm feeling great, but I feel fucking bad. That was but a Trade Zero, at least stock market's up. Um, last time I looked, P-E-N-N was up like 3.5%. Score is up. I use Trade Zero. I do all my trading with Trade Zero. Here's why Trade Zero is a different platform than other. This is what they're going to say. I'm going to tell you my experience after a 24 7 live customer service. That's huge. Multi platform access trading from 4 a.m. to 8 p.m. Couldn't do that with uh, E Trade. They won't let me after. Pricing commission free to direct market center access. Robust inventory for shorting. That's huge if you like to short. Conditional and range orders locate sellbacks. For me, it never crashes. Like E Trade always crashed. Was never there when you needed it. I haven't had one issue with Trade Zero, um, so I recommend it. I use it clearly. Um, I could pull it up right now, and like I said, last time I saw, Penn was having a good day. The stock market in general is having a good day, but it's got the web interface. Yeah, Penn's up four percent. Nice. So good day for Penn. Good day for my wallet. Uh, I like seeing that. Maybe it's because we're live in Jersey, so the stock market reflecting it. Who knows? Uh, all new fund accounts get three months of Trade Zero's flagship pro platform, Zero Pro. Initial account minimum twenty five hundred dollars. Don't just trade Trade Zero. But yeah, I don't feel good. I don't feel good. What? Because pizza related or just? just uh, I, I don't know. Action? Like driving around, traffic, yeah. Ubers, car sick, exhausted. I hear you. Come off a weekend, you know how that goes. Yeah, a lot of hot dogs. Tired. A lot of hot dogs. Yeah, I thought <laughs> that was funny. I thought it was funny too. Uh, that, so that I mean, if whatever you bring it up now, you what like? We'll get into it. We got we got we got Bobby Lang waiting main eventer Friday rough Bobby and rowdy Lang, Friday night rough and rowdy. There he is. I saw Bobby Lang in Saratoga. He was waiting in line like uh, at, not the heavyweight champ of the world, just like an average guy to go to the bathroom at Gaffney's. Did you help him out? I I was like walking out. He was walking in. What is that song? What's up? Yeah. My arm is. Yeah, you're on. Bobby Lang. Hey, what's up? So, uh, what do you think is going to happen Friday? I mean, this is, this to me is your hardest fight, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't. There's the element of we got no idea what to expect from Pac-Man Lang. Uh, Pac-Man Lang. Pac-Man Jones. We know he's a pro athlete, or and a yeah. very good one. He was. So, like, what are you thinking? I think yeah, he's definitely like wicked athletic. Obviously, he played in the NFL. Um, I think he's just relying on that, though. I think I'm a way better boxer than him. You know what I mean? Just straight up, like, boxing skills-wise, I'm definitely, like, I think White is ahead of him in terms of, you know, skill. But he is definitely a superior athlete in every possible aspect of measuring athleticism. He's definitely, a, you know, he got me there. But in a fight, when it's especially a boxing match, it's it's – it doesn't matter how good you are at other sports. You know, it doesn't translate. You know, I don't think he's, I don't think he has a skill set to keep up with me, in my opinion. So what? I, I, I'm pretty confident I'm going to win. Yeah, it, it, I mean, he's a, he's a tough dude anyway. Like obviously, you know, word around the street in the NFL was he was like one of the toughest dudes around. So I mean, I'm sure he's going to come out swinging, trying to take my head off. I'm sure, and I know he's not going to go down easy. You know, he's not going to go down without a fight. So I, I know it's going to be a battle. Um, but I just think I'm a better boxer and my skills are better than his. And that's what it's going to come down to in the end. So when you've obviously, what's your record now with us? It's like five and oh. five and oh. Yeah. So have, yeah. do you consistently train in between fights or do you wait? Hey, we got enough. Like how, like, what do you do? I consistently train like nonstop, but I definitely amp it up. Like, the like, so right after a fight, you know, I kind of get, I kind of have like, take it easy. You know, I mean, I'm still training, but I, I you know, I'm not sparring like I always am. You know I mean? I'm not going as hard, but then once like, you know, a couple months out from the fight, that's when I like really like pick it up. Like I, you know, I, I up the intensity and I spar, you know, fucking twice a week. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I go hard. So I've been going hard the last three, three, four straight months for this fight. So I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm in the best shape. Obviously I had a cut weight for this fight too. So I, I'm in like the best cardio I've ever had, you know what I mean? So I'm I'm ready to fight right now, so I'm good I, to go. I think this will be this is probably for me personally the most anticipated fight that I think we've ever had. In terms of, I've seen Bobby fight a bunch. He's the real deal and he's always ready. Like some of the other heavyweights, I feel like you, you weren't sure where you get where I was gonna get the A plus effort from Bobby Lang. And I think Pac Man, by all indications, is taking this shit very serious. I know primetime Dion who's like friends with him want to come and watch. To me, that's like 
You got two guys who are going to be very ready to fight, and it's the element that is always like what you're saying, the the ex-great athlete versus the guy who's the really, really good boxer. I'm excited. I, I, I'm excited. Do we have – there's no line on this, is there? We don't have like – what what is it in the play bar stool, or is it just you pick who wins? Someone told me they posted a line for it, but I couldn't see it because I live in Massachusetts, so I, I can't – obviously I can't uh, bet through the yeah, bar yeah. stool sports book. But somebody somebody messaged me on Instagram telling me that uh, he's a slight favorite. So I don't know. I I'm, I can't get the exact line though. Do you get like nervous for this, or this is just uh, excite? Like what is like what are you feeling like now with the fight just being Honestly, a couple days away? I never got nervous before because it was kind of just like don't like it was like fun for me. But now it's at the point where the stakes are so much higher. I'm still not nervous, but it's definitely like there's more there's more on the line now for me. You know what I mean? Like I've I've gone. From, you know, just like fighting random dudes in Providence to now, you know, fighting Pac-Man Jones on a, on a big stage. So the stakes are obviously a lot higher. So, And they're a lot higher. And like it. my one takeaway, and I don't know if anybody ever even said this to you after our last, I think, rough around, maybe the first, it was like we got to build Bobby Lang. Like we got to yeah. start paying him more. We start to get him bigger fights, like things that because you were fighting at we had we had the one guy, the country guy who wore the jeans. But after that, it was a mishmash of people. But yeah. this is like, well, now everyone knows you through us and they know him just because he's him. Like everyone yeah, exactly. knows Pac-Man. So it's a legit headlining event in my mind, which is what we want to build to. So you win this one keeps building it. That's like, yeah, the exactly. Goal. Yeah. That's kind of the same thing I've been, I've been thinking. It's like, this is what I've wanted this whole time. This is what we are working towards. And now we're finally there, so now i got to deliver. You know what I mean? I'm excited. I am very excited. Yeah, same Dave, here. I'm fucking pumped. Dave, you always have like a ring to it, Braintree, when you say it. How would you describe Braintree for people not in the area? And then, Bobby, tell me if he's accurate. All right, let's hear that. Well, he's from well, the North Shore. Yeah, so first I'm of all, I'm a North Shore guy. Here. Right, yeah. First <laughs> of all, I'm a North Shore guy. I did live in Abington for a little bit, but... So I, I don't know, Paul, who's sitting here is a Randolph guy, so he may have more of the brain. But to me, like, a Randolph and a brain tree kind of were, like, the same thing in my head. They were, like, I don't know. They're not, like, it, it's a middle-class South Shore town to me. I, I don't really go, like, Duxbury, I would think, is, like, rich kids. and But brain tree, yeah. I would think, is kind of just middle of the road. You're going to find a little bit of everything. That's how I think of brain tree. Yeah, it's a pretty accurate description. I'll give him that. Um, yeah, middle class town, South Shore, right next to Boston. Obviously, like you know, get on the red line, you're in there. So it's you get you get all the perks of living close to the city without actually having to live in the city. So it's, but it, it's definitely not like Duxbury where you got like all rich kids. Like yeah, well, like who else is in you know Braintree's I mean? so, conference? Say it again. Who's there. in Braintree's conference? Uh, it was the base state when I was in high school. It was a base state league, so it was like Braintree, Weymouth, Framingham, uh, Milton. Uh, who else? Newton North. Yeah, so it, that's yeah, exactly Dad, what Dad it Dad is. It, it's yeah. a very middle class, like yeah, yeah. neighbor. It, it it's kind of like blue collar, but it, it, yeah, you're not. Yeah. It's not rich. It's not poor. It's just a very like American type normal. That's how I viewed it. That's kind of yeah. how I viewed it. Yeah, definitely. I agree. Who's your assuming you win here, Bobby? Who's the, you got a dream fight scenario? Who would be? Is it someone who works for Barstool? Is it rather like a pseudo celebrity here? Who do you got? Uh it's funny you say that. Everyone always keeps tell all these people come out of the woodwork, like, dude, you got to call this person, you got to call that person. And I try not to like get too ahead of myself, you know. I got I because I got to beat Pac-Man first before I really start think. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not gonna sit there thinking about who I'm gonna fight next when I got this other fight coming up right in front of me, who's gonna be a wicked tough opponent for me. But obviously, everyone always says the Paul brothers. You got to call Logan Paul. You got to call Jake Paul. But to me, it's like those guys are w like way too big time that they're even gonna waste their time responding to me. So. Unless Basu got involved and really pushed them, you know, I don't even and, think know, threw we, a bag yeah. at them. But. I don't even think we could. They're, they're, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that's on. the thing is, so you can't. So what I tell people is, you can't waste your call out like at, when you get the when you get the spotlight. You can't waste your call out on somebody that's not going to answer. You got to try to find somebody that's like you know big enough, but also not too big that they that they actually might consider consider taking the fight. So I do have a couple people in mind. But I kind of don't know if I should give it away ahead of time. I you think you'll I mean? wait. I think you'll wait. Yeah. And right. that's part but of I what do, we... The people that I have in mind are like the perfect candidates. Like they're pretty big, but they're not too big. They, you know, they're, they're, they definitely know Boston. So it's and, actually, you know, it could happen. So and, and that's what I we're be, trying to do. Back, man, hopefully I can make this happen. That's what What's we're that? trying to do, Eddie. It's like we need to build our, like, 
if Bobby wins, beating Pac-Man's a huge like feather in his cap and builds the notoriety. And then, okay, because anybody in the fight game, and that's why I use like Logan and Jake Paul. I mean, fucking Logan Paul just fought, fought fucking Mayweather, right? Yeah, so exactly. It's like that's what I you, you gotta you gotta to game. make the fight work for both sides. You gotta find people who view each other. We can bring like sort of an equal amount to the table, and you know have the interest. That's how a fight will work. People always call. Listen. Everyone wants to call it Logan and Jake because they have yeah. the, the, they've got this huge fucking audience and they've proved it. But I mean that that you 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 have to be Mayweather like you have to bring yeah, a exactly. huge crowd with. So you. I figured that out because uh, the first after my first couple wins, like after I got the, the heavyweight belt and all that stuff, and I won a couple times, I did actually call out. I think I called out Jake Paul, or Logan Paul, or whatever. And actually, Boswell on the on the main Twitter account actually tweeted at him like a video. And it got a couple hundred thousand views and stuff, but obviously, you know, nothing, no traction gain from it because they must have just looked at it and been like, yeah, I don't, I don't even know who this kid is. But, uh, and so not only really that, Bobby, my, not yeah. only that, it's like yeah. you're, you're dangerous. So it's like, well, why, yeah. yeah, why are you going to take some, if you're going to fight somebody who could theoretically beat you, you better bring fucking, like, they better be getting a huge payday to take that risk. Yeah, exactly. Right now, Jake Paul, and who knows on this next fight, I've heard multiple things, but he's being smart. And who he, like, Ben Askren had no chance to beat him, but he gave the illusion that he may because he yeah, was a wrestler. Yeah, they can't pick in fights. Yeah, right. You know, I mean, they're picking the perfect opponents for him that are, like, they look good on paper, but he knows he's going to win. Right. But, yeah, so that's the thing. There was no incentive for him to fight me. Like, it's it's not worth the risk. Like, if I, you know, he's like, oh, this this kid could beat me. What am I getting out of it? If I, You know what I mean? So right. I learned my lesson. So then that's why the last time I, I kind of toned it down a little. I called it WWE because we had that uh, the little yep. person fight. If, I forget his name. But I knew he was in the double WWE. And uh, I kept seeing all these different, like, wrestlers, like, with, like, blue check marks next to their name. Because I don't follow wrestling. But I kept seeing on, like, social media all these people commenting on the videos. And like blue check marks, I click on the name and it's like WWE, WWE. So I was like, oh shit, all these guys are fucking gonna be watching. Like clearly they're paying attention to this dude. So I, that's why I called them out. Cause I was like, yeah, that's like, you know, I'll get somebody that's like middle of the road. Like they're kind of big, but they're not too big. So maybe they answer and then Boss will can hype it up and we'll make a big fight out of it. And then obviously Pac Man Jones came out of the woodwork. So I was like, oh fuck. I, don't, I wasn't expecting that, but. This is even better, so yeah. let's do it. I can't wait. Friday night pay per view. I, it's our best card. Not only obviously this is the main event. We got the two chefs fighting. We got the little person fight. We got Supreme Patty fight. We got a ton of great fights headlined by this one, which um, I'm excited for. I, I'm going to your this fight, then I go to the Jake Paul fight. I'm more excited to see what happens in this. So uh, good yeah. luck. I'll be rooting for you, and hopefully uh, keep this thing going. Yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for having me on. Also. One last thing I want to say. Uh, obviously, we bumped into each other at Gaffney's the other day. Yeah. I just yeah, want to say, that's fucking hilarious how you have the security, like, cut the bathroom line for you. Like, <laughs> I, I well, slipped right People in. that don't know this, th we're sitting in line, and there's, like, guys with security with flashlights, like, out of the way, out of the way. And but who, what the fuck's going on? I thought someone was, like, ODing in the bathroom or something. They were coming in there to, like, <laughs> save the day. They're just escorting Dave to the bathroom. Just yeah. everyone out of the way. I got to take a picture. And, and I got to be honest. Nobody complains. Like if I was in line oh, there, funny. I would probably be like, "What the fuck?" But they're very nice, and I in in that sort of makes me sound like a dick. I don't ask for it. I'm like, I'm going to the bathroom. Yeah. And they just come with me, and I'm not like turning it down because the bathroom line at Gaffney's is around the corner. The bathroom. <laughs> that's the one flaw with Gaffney's. It's the bathroom situation's out of control. Like that was in the VIP bathroom. The other bathroom that the commoners are in is even worse. Like it's I was because obviously a couple weeks before, and we didn't do the VIP treatment or whatever. This time we learned our lesson. It was fucking, you literally had to go wait outside. Like, I just kept pretending I smoked cigarettes so I could go piss around the corner behind the building. Yeah. So, hey, man, can I go smoke a butt? And I don't actually, obviously, I don't smoke butts, but it worked. But yeah. uh, it was just funny. It hey, was. if I was worth $100 million, I wouldn't wait in bathroom lines either. So, <laughs> I'm right. I'm on your team for this. All right. I'll see you this weekend. Good luck. All right. All right. Thanks. Looking Bye. forward to it. Thanks for having me on. Yep, see you guys probably. later. Bye. All right, buy rnr.com, go get it. And uh, while you do it, Dave, where should you get your pizza from? What's that? Where should you get the pizza from? Oh, for that, was a, that was a uh, segue. You got it. Yep. Slice. And uh, I, I'm, I don't even know if I'm going to do this, read exactly out of this, but they're supporting local pizzerias, pizzerias, and so is Slice. Slice partners over 16,000 pizzerias, put m more money in their pockets of shops than if you ordered any other um, delivery apps. Now, 
If you're a pizzeria owner, join Slice and get Portnoy promotional pricing. Mention me, get no fees through the end of the year. Slice is sponsoring the Borelli's pop-up shop in New York City this Wednesday and Thursday. Be sure to check it out if you live in the city. Download Slice in the App Store today, and listeners are eligible for exclusive discounts. Again, use the code, promo code Dave for $3 off your first order. So I partnered up with Slice. Went out to dinner with them in the city a couple weeks ago. Uh, learning, I've always known what they've done, but learning more about how they want to help the local pizzeria places. And the reason that they want to be involved me is my credibility is probably highest in the pizza world. I want to make sure it's real. So here's the thing. I am now like, I'm involved in Slice. I'm involved in Slice. They're like, how do we get you to treat this like it's a pen or something that you're fucking totally passionate about? So we did a deal. And I'm telling you right now, here's what my job basically is. Slice helps pizzerias and they help them in a way that they have the software and technology. A lot of these mom and pop shops who have great spots, they they don't have like, they can't predict orders, call flow, all this shit. Slice will give it to you. Slice will install it and basically streamline these pizzerias. So you know how much dough you need, uh, call center, whatever you need help with that may slow down uh, a pizza place that's done it the same way for 100 years. They're going to just kind of bring some of their technology in and help you out. It doesn't cost you anything. A lot of old school pizzerias maybe. What is this? I don't need this. I don't want this. I'm getting screwed. They brought me on because I won't tell a pizza place to do something they shouldn't. So if you are a single pizzeria and you aren't on Slice right now, you should give them a call and figure out how they can help you because they can help. They can basically just modernize you. You that know what I do? Sense. You know what I like about Slice too, Dave? I use the one bite app to kind of look like where I want to get. And mm-hmm. if they're not, even if a place doesn't use Slice, they don't like take them off the app. You know what right. I mean? Yep. Like, so you could still click on it. It's like, oh, like they don't offer Slice, but, you know, click here to call them or something, which is, which is nice. Yeah. It's not just looking out for themselves. And the Slice app will be improved. It has to be improved, but it's better. For the pizza place. They keep more money to sale, like Grubhub, DoorDash, all that is not geared towards just pizza. So they take a bigger cut. Basically, if you support local pizza, both the pizzeria and the end user, you should be using Slice. Awesome. So go do it. Uh, Right now we have joining us Will Compton. We made a fatal error last podcast. Uh, So we kind of wanted to bring on the boy to kind of talk. Did you know I made this error in real time? I did. I did. You did, but you didn't say anything? I mean, I can't. I, well, number one, Greg started talking. Boys, are we thought, live? Yeah, we're live. You're on, Will. I did know in hey. real time. I didn't want to interrupt Greg. I don't think you knew in real time. Or you I would have s- said anything. I, I swear on my life, I did. I, I, I okay. truly, I truly do. Wh- wh- where's Taylor? Taylor's at training camp. Oh, He's interesting. So he Why couldn't. He, he couldn't jump on to do this podcast to help the podcast because he's in a league. <laughs> yeah, he's in, he's he's currently in the league. He's an active NFL player right now. Makes it harder. Listen, we've had, first of all, <laughs> did I forget? Maybe a little bit. We've had this discussion without you, busting with the boy. It, like it, it can't exist without you. Oh, I agree. I think I think the reason we're on here is, you know, you forgot that the boys existed last week. Like you're a head coach, you pride yourself in sport analogies. Like if I'm gonna sign this brand, I need it to be a a foot. I need it to be a team friendly deal, a player friendly deal. And we get in the moment. You're talking with your boy Greg Olson, who I know you wish probably had some podcasts out there, but he couldn't. And you just forget the boys. And you were just on the bus not too long ago. No, I was on the bus. I, being the team player I am, I flew down just to go on the bus. Just I, I, I said I cleared everything. Like Dave, we need you to ring the bell of stock exchange. We need you to cut this river. I said nope. I got to go to Tennessee, Nashville. I got to be on the bus. But no, my point is this: I didn't put you in that category because you have dedicated a lot of time, energy, effort to this podcast. I said it to you. Like if, like without you, this doesn't exist. Because you you are focused on it where, like, Taylor can come in and out and you have it all set up for him, but he's still playing and that's still his number one priority. Correct? Correct. But the thing was, you said there is no great podcast out there where there's active NFL players. Yes, you have your argument that I'm sitting here right now unemployed, but I also have been the last two years and we've still been apparently doing the impossible because Greg made it seem like it's some impossible feat to be an active player podcast and juggle both at the same time yeah and and i do think it's hard again without you i don't think it works and i think a lot of guys greg being one of them 
Taylor, definitely you, but more Taylor. I think he, he's less concerned what, with what he says, which I, I definitely think is an exception to the rule. But without you, it doesn't – like if you two are both full, full focused on the NFL, I don't think the podcast exists nearly as well. I don't think it's great. You're making your own rules up, though. What do you mean by full focus on the NFL? Like, I still am very focused on playing in the NFL. I have been the last couple of years. I just take certain gambles and bet on myself with a, co- with a couple other areas, bust with the boys being one of them, and wait and see how the season unfolds or preseason before I make the move to play and give my full attention to the NFL. I, I view you as podcast first, late, since I've known you. That, like, that, listen, that's fair. That is fair. It is what I'm very, I'm very much focused on this podcast. I, they're, uh, you know, and then you have Eddie, who I'm sitting there watching the clip, and I'm like, I, sure. I think it's Eddie's fault. And there is no great podcast anywhere that I'm aware of with active players. <laughs> Eddie's going to say something. But Eddie, the, like the company man he is, he sat there like a player who didn't know if he's going to make the team or not and didn't want to say nothing to the head coach. Like I, to- like I said to you, if I had to correct Dave every time, we'd be stuck in mud for an hour and a half. I, I, no, just, please, I wasn't going to do please. it. Please, please. And when, when it was brought to my attention, I popped my shoulder out. How quickly I was like, yeah, I fucked that one up. Like I, not a lot of head coaches probably that quick to watch, walk to the podium and, and be like, yeah, no, I got that one. I got that one wrong. But I'm telling you, it's because I don't, and this you could take as an insult or not. I don't view you. I view you as a podcast first guy. That's okay that you view me that way, but you're, you're like making an exception to the rule to make it seem like it was all right. At well, the end of the day, like, you know, I've been the last two years I've been an active NFL player and bouncing the podcast. Taylor as well. Like, I know you want to say I do it all, but you need the big man to show up. People don't just show up to listen to me talk on the podcast. They show up to listen to the boys. You, there's days, there was weeks in the beginning when uh, we partnered up where Taylor and I are grinding out 12 podcasts in one week. All generator, no hot spot, all heat, all gas, no brakes, dude. And, you know, you got to give the boy a little more credit than what you're giving him. He doesn't just show up. He, He's very much involved. But, yeah, I definitely take – Wait a minute. He doesn't just show up? No. Taylor's involved with all the decision-making. Yeah. Question, question. So, how does it work? Do you pre-record everything before the season? I don't know if I believe that. It, give, give an example. Like – Taylor, Taylor, like uh, scheduling the guests and whatnot. Taylor scheduled a couple guests in his day. I mean, even, like, <laughs> oh, yeah. even the way, even the way you just answer that, and and I feel like I've talked to him before. Like I don't think I'm saying anything. He'd be like, "No, I I think you sa- you need somebody who's consistently focused on the podcast when you are a full time." number one guy in like that NFL career making billions. I don't think that's like generally leads to a successful podcast. No, at the end of the day, I think we're both uh, like, we're both trying to say things to, to win an argument. But yeah, like Taylor, he's I clearly focused on the NFL and getting back on track after tearing his knee last year. And, you know, I'll bend any which way to make the boys work. Uh, But either way, to, to sit there with your boy and say, I don't think there's any great active NFL player podcast out there and just not even realize it's like a coach not knowing who his, le- who his left tackle is. Like, yeah, we might not be we might not be the superstar of the roster that you're on, but we're the steady. The one I you think you guys are a great podcast. All right. Well, OK, that was the, it, it was much more. I don't. And, and this is where it may be sort of insulting to you because I know you've you, I don't, how many times have you been? a free agent versus on a team during your tenure here. It's hard to keep track. (laughs) Since we started, since we started, when I got done with my first year on the Titans, I basically was like, okay, I've been a backup and a special teamer this past year, so I don't have a whole lot of film. Um, I know if I get picked up, I'm going to be a one-year minimum guy. And do I want to go and do that during OTAs? And my answer was no. I wanted to focus on building this podcast idea we had. So I would basically say no to teams and wait it out to last minute. And that was the year I ended up playing for the Raiders. Uh, but, yeah, this is I'm going on my third year of doing this. So, so to me, that that is in my head when I – and it's not – and maybe I should phrase it. You maybe can have somebody – and when I'm doing a podcast with Greg, like, I'm not going to be the focus guy. Like, I'm not going to put all my energy. Even when I did it with Eddie, it's like, Eddie, I don't want to be the guy. I want to be the tailor. I want to be able to sit down in the chair and be ready to go. And then I go do a million different things. I know you're 
supremely focused on making the podcast great, which I think is great. But in that mindset, it I haven't thought of it as like a player running it. And I know Taylor's great, but he can just sit in the chair and do it. Does that make any sense? Oh, yeah, absolutely does. I still think we fall into the category of active player podcast because Taylor is still a very much an active player. I'm an active free agent, but... Will, yeah. Will Compton is the driving force behind the podcast. He's in sales meetings. He's up my ass on social. Post this. Po- I haven't talked to Taylor in That's what two I mean. years. It's kind of like, it's actually very similar. And, and the Chicklets guy will, will agree. Biz is the driving guy behind like pushing the, of what they want to do. Whitney's golfing 95% yeah, so of the time. Yeah, so if you don't have that guy, and, and again, I view it when you have two full-time first, like career first of the sport still, it's not going to work because of all the stuff he's just saying. So I don't – when I'm talking to Greg, I didn't view it that because I know you're on the pod. So I view you in as – I know you'll sign or play somewhere to it, but I view you as like one of us. Oh, yeah, I agree. And I think that was a moment you could sit there and be like, oh, you know what, there is one podcast. Or Eddie well, that's Eddie's this. job. That's Eddie's <laughs> job. <laughs> like I got a lot of things going on in my head. This guy, he tried to say last week, he's like, oh, I would like watch Netflix. I keep up with content. I left when he said that. He's not doing that. You know that. What are you talking about? Dave, well, he's like, oh, he's like, I don't want to hang out with people. I like to just like watch Netflix. I keep up with content. That's what I do in my free time. I laughed at him. He's not keeping up. You think content? he's tuning in to fucking. I know what's going on with the boys because we got the what's his name. That country artist was wearing the shirt the other day. You think I, I don't know that? I'm all over. I'm paying attention. It's like I'm like fucking Batman in the cave with all the screens, seeing what everybody's doing at all times. And when he called me out, I popped my shoulder. I, I forgot. He's right. He's got a point. I screwed up that one yeah you did you raised your hand i think it was just disappointing in the moment to see both guys that are on your team we're all on the same team together miss an opportunity to let greg know that the impossible is done and it's done in house with barstool but it's it, it how is it not done like what okay even greg said like even in yeah, I look over at my wife. I'm like, hey, is Greg throwing a little jab here at the boys saying decent? It's, if you're going to be a decent football player, it's like, what categorizes all this stuff to make it seem like it's an NFL active player podcast? Because of you. No active player yeah, but- who's on a roster 24-7 in the weight room getting fucking all that shit can do all this shit. None of them's going to be up Paul's ass about social and everything he just said that doesn't exist. Exactly. So it's like when you say there is but no But you're break- not active. At the moment, but I have. But that's like, very important. I'm getting triggered. I need to calm down. <laughs> hey, I, you know what? Like, you're not you're active, not, though. You're right. I'm not active right now. I'm not an active player. But the last two years, we've been active. But but you're very confusing on when you because you haven't been active a lot too. Wait, what was that? Say that again. You haven't been at. It's not like you've been active the full time. Remember seeing like, I feel like it was halfway through the season when the Raiders signed you. No. Well, correct because I got injured on the Saints, and okay. I don't want to. I don't want to throw too much there because people be like, "Oh, it's like a guy saying he got hurt in high school and couldn't didn't make the league or in the next step." I got injured in the preseason, in the fourth preseason game with the Saints, and I had taken an injury settlement and then signed to the Raiders after my injury was recovered. Uh, and what week was that? Which week of the Did Raiders? You go to the Raiders. Uh, like eight or nine. So I mean, that's a lot of time. So I again, it's I. If you were a player who had a gigantic contract, not gigantic, but big, and, and that was the focus, this wouldn't work. It couldn't work without the time and energy and effort that you put into it, which in my head, I, I, I know that. Like, I know Taylor sits down in the seat, and he's great, and I think he's charismatic, and the podcast works. But the hardest thing a lot of times to make podcasts work is the behind-the-scenes stuff with ch- chopping up social and getting the guests and making sure everything's running, which you do. I don't do that stuff. We have a team that does that stuff. But where's the team? team. And I'm the, shouting out all the boys, Alex, Blas, JP. But who Gary, put that team together? You probably. Yeah, but that's like that's – either way, we're going back to you still failed to mention that you had an in-house podcast that was doing the impossible. Whether or not I'm a high-paid player or not, I was still but playing. You, you, I was still sitting in the meetings with my asshole tight knowing I was about to push bust with the boys and we had just lost a game. Like, it still exists. And I was the first one who raised my hand and be like, yes, but I'm telling you how I thought about it differently. Because when I said it, you were not an active player. And when football season is gearing up, a lot of times you, you haven't been active. 
Okay, fair. and I'm not trying to put down like the football. Like <laughs> obviously, way, you're still forgetting the other half. You're forgetting Taylor Lewan, who's a three-time Pro Bowl, who is active, who still pushes the podcast every week. Correct, but what? And you, we could go semantics. I'm picturing two Taylor Lewans, two whoever you want. That is that focus. It will never work. It'll be an afterthought to me. Well, I mean, yeah, I'm not a high-paid player, so I can't prove that wrong. And who knows if there's a if there's a, a high play, high paid player that's like the boy out there who might want to do it. I mean, time will tell. Like when we when we had signed and went out to Miami, you thought there would be uh, several NFL podcasts that came after that. Like there are there are a couple for sure, but they're not they don't operate all year round. Like like you know, even, even I was I was I I bumped into different sport, um, and I didn't even know he had. Uh, a podcast, but Duncan Robinson from the Heat, Miami Heat. He started a podcast. I was like, really? That must be hard because, like, how do you sling it? And he's like, yeah, it's really hard, like, with the juggling everything. That's more what I meant. I, I think Buzz, I would have never signed, but I think Buzzin's great. And it wasn't meant to be. It was really in that moment. And I think a lot of how I think of it is because of you. You don't treat and maybe you're just unique. You don't treat it as a second job. Treat the podcast as a second job? You do not treat it that way. Oh, yeah, that's correct. But that, I have met almost nobody who's a professional athlete who views it as – and we've had a lot of them who have come through, like Terry Rozier did it at one point, who just view it as like, yeah, it's a throwaway second, like third thought. You don't think of that that way. Now, you'll say, well, I was in the league and I can do both. I think your situation uniquely makes it so you can put the effort necessary into making it great. Yeah, I mean, I don't disagree with you. I don't like anybody who does come through and want to do the podcast thing. I don't think they necessarily see the vision, nor do they understand the hard work that goes behind it. So you're definitely right. I'm just – I'm here to to say that the whole we don't have a great podcast in the house with juggling football and balancing both. Like, yeah, if, if you sit here and somebody who signed a huge-ass deal, they should focus solely on becoming – or being the very best player in the NFL, being number one on the top 100. And I don't know, but just for the record, like Greg and I, not that mass, I don't even know if you care, that we weren't doing like an NFL podcast. It was never going to be a football. This is going to be like he didn't want to do more football. It was going to be more like world events. It's like he's definitely more conservative than like Taylor. Like he was going for Manilow. He just didn't want to talk how we would talk if it was just a private conversation, like because of his sure. NFL shit. Yeah, Taylor's definitely a unique individual like that. And the, the the kind of perfect storm, as I was explaining to you my situation earlier on, like knowing I would be a one-year minimum guy, so I was going to wait it out. We were going to grow this podcast. Taylor had also just signed, I want to say, the biggest uh, offensive lineman deal in the history at the time. So the man was kind of like already paid. He has kind of his personality that he already has. So it was kind of a – it was a perfect storm for us. Right. I don't yeah, think I mean, he I... was trying to throw shade either. I don't think Greg – Me? Did... Uh, Greg, Greg, I, I oh, don't no, think he's so. definitely neither of us were to be totally no, honest. I know, I know Greg's not. Greg and I actually have a, a very subtle history. When um, I had earned my spot to play, uh, we were playing back at we were playing Carolina back was on, when I was on Washington, and we were at Carolina, and I had broken up this easy pass. I want to say he hooked up over the middle, and I came over, shot my arm through. It was incomplete, and I threw out the incomplete pass, and I also webbed him. We had this inside joke. Uh, at our facility that whenever a coach said something outlandish or somebody said something wrong, you would, you would Spider-Man them, you'd web them. And uh, I would do it at practice and, and joke around and shit like that. And some of the boys, some of the special teamers were like, Hey comp, like if you make a play, you should web somebody when you're out there on the field. So when I had incompleted a pass uh, on Greg Olson, I turned around and webbed him. And he goes, like, who the fuck are you? What are you third string? And like, I'm like laughing. And I was like, Hey, Hey man, I work for this spot. And then during a timeout, the next series, we were on a timeout. He came up to me. He's like, Hey man, I apologize for what I said earlier. Like, I know you are in this spot, man. It's, it's hard work to even be here. So I, I, I apologize. Greg's an awesome dude. I love just creating that subtle smoke whenever I had that opportunity the other day, just yeah. because we had that little play. Yeah. And I mean, again, he came after me and I, I thought I came out looking the best by taking accountability for it, but to my you never know sometimes you never know what's going on in your brain i don't know that that was going to come up i was just literally telling we greg and i had talked because i've known forever and we have a great relationship and i think there's good dynamic it wasn't football but it just as long as he was playing it, it never would have worked because i am not going to put the time and effort to create the game plan and all the plan i don't i don't have time for it so 
it, it and even with this, Eddie can attest to it. When we start doing this, it's like Eddie, you got to do like most of the groundwork and legwork, and I'll just sit in the chair and go. I'm happy to do it, but I don't have the time to do the other shit. And I, you need somebody. And we've seen it with everything, with PMT, where all of them are that dedicated to it. Call her daddy, maniacal about Like, you need people, what you said earlier is true. People do not get how difficult it is and how much time, effort, not only to do the podcast, but then promote it after, slice it up, get it out. And, like, even what you did is what you have to do. You have to know everything that's being said. Because everything becomes a story that feeds into your own podcast. And we've had the guys, Terry Rozier being a perfect example. Lots of athletes want to get, they, I don't know why, they, they, they view podcasting like this is an easy way to make money, get out there. But they don't have the, 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 the even a one billionth of the desire that you do or know what you actually have to do. So we say no all the time. It's like, we're not going to just promote and do all the shit and get no like dedication from you. It makes no sense from our end. Rightly or wrongly, I have viewed you as like podcast first. So that changes. I think it's a great podcast and I know Taylor's involved. I don't, I think you can create something great if you find the right personality, which Taylor is, and the guy who can set it all up and knows what's doing and has that relationship. But it's very, even that's super unique, but you've been able to do it. Yeah. I mean, you need, you need a good team. Like you were saying earlier, you can't just, you don't just show up on podcasting or like think, Oh, be in the content game or oh, I want to have a podcast. Like people actually have no clue. Like even I didn't really have a clue. Like I just knew I would watch podcasts. I was huge into podcasting and I was like, you know, there's really not any NFL player podcasts out there where guys are actively playing. Like you see the retired guys try it. And uh, I was like, I think it'd be pretty cool if you get the conversations we have in a sauna or in the locker room and everything else, you get mics behind it. So I basically blueprint and mimic what podcasts I like, how they acted on social media and everything else. And we kind of created this storm. And after you do a few and you get going, you realize what kind of team and back end work you actually need because it is a shitload of work. And it's like, it's not just Taylor and I, like we have an awesome team that sits back there because before we got in this new shop, that we're in now, we didn't have any electricity. You were in the old spot. Yeah, I know. But even no if you created the team. No, no nothing. Even creating the team is hard. Every every aspect of it takes effort, work, and you do that. So that's a credit to you. It Weirdly, that's why I didn't, it didn't trigger for me because I know you do all that. And it's first, there's very few athletes that you're going to find who view the world the way you're viewing it, which is like willing to put in the work. A lot of them have made too much money where they're like, you know, it's just not worth it for me to do all this stuff. Um, right. But you do. So, and, and I've always viewed you that way. And that's why it's been successful. It wasn't meant as a slight. It didn't, it, it really wasn't. And to, in, in fact, when I first saw you tweet at me, I didn't know what you were talking about. Like I didn't read it yet. And I'm like, I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> well, yeah, we were in a group chat right before I tweeted it. I, the, well, the first thing you sent, I didn't know what you meant. I had to go back and watch the I read what you said in oh, the- Oh, you just saw what Taylor and I was saying? Correct, but I didn't know what you were referring to. And then I went and watched it. It's like, oh, now I get it. That's why I didn't like say anything right away. I think I responded- All you put was tough. All you put was tough. That I had- <laughs> And Taylor and I kept going, and then we were- uh, So I had, uh, I, I, that was, I was actually sort of blowing you guys off with tough. I didn't know what it was about yet. I saw it was like tough. And then you kept going. I'm like, what the fuck are these guys talking about? And then I went and watched it. And then I was like, oh, now I get it. That's why the apology came a little later. Yeah, I got you. No, I texted Eddie because people were tagging us and I ended up watching it. And I'm because like, I knew we didn't talk oh, about you in the podcast. So I was like, what the fuck are these guys talking about? So it's just like tough and went about. And then you guys kept going. But no, it's a, listen, again, we want to sign you. I wouldn't have gone down there if I didn't believe in the podcast and think it was great. It, it, but I was viewing it totally different. It literally didn't even cross my mind, to be honest, when we had that conversation. I don't know if that's more insulting or not, but it didn't. No, 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 like none of that stuff's insulting. Like last year, we're going around playing, and there's a, a buddy of mine, and we would just joke like, hey, you know, I'm just a podcatcher playing in the NFL and joke around. So I don't like take that stuff as a slight because uh, we balance like – we balance both. Like I'm able to balance both. I understand the risks I take by being on a mic and slinging it and stuff like that. And, uh, waiting, playing the waiting game. So no, I don't take it as a slight. All right. I apologize Eddie. too. I, yeah, you know, you I should, respect Eddie. you. Eddie, you're a coward. If you oh, knew about it you. in what? real time, oh. I didn't know about it in real time. You, if you're saying you knew about it and you just kept that happy go lucky grin, 
Eddie, all you had to say was, hey, "I'll buy some with the bus with the boys." Don't yeah. forget about it. That's all you had to say, Eddie. Oh, true. Wait, listen, I, I, when you got three boxes here and you're zooming around, and you, it's hard to keep fucking darting into traffic. I apologize. You know, I respect you. Move I respect right, your right. show, and I respect your NFL grind as well, Will. Dave didn't I say that. that. I even hear Gaz back there. How does does he have a mic or something? I don't see his yeah, camera. A, on him. Yeah, he does. Oh, okay. Well, I appreciate it, boys. This has been fun. Yeah. Thank you, Will. Again, I think I think we all, you know, I think the real loser here was Eddie, who didn't speak up. <laughs> I mean, you knew, Eddie. If you knew, you should have said I, something. I don't, I just, listen, like I said, you get into the show, people get flowing. Greg was flowing on his next thought. It just wasn't really an opening. I like, I pay attention to the continuity here, Dave. All right? Yeah. I mean, obviously, I, I want to I wanna promote everything we got. That's I'm the biggest team guy there is. Well, oddly enough, this worked out in the best way possible. If, if get that's some promo. Case. Yeah, I texted Eddie. He was like, "Hey, you know, I can't talk when the boss man's talking." I was like, oh, "Okay, sell out." <laughs> <laughs> when when does the show come out? Well, when's what's the schedule? Your guys' show? No, yours, yours. Oh, ours every Wednesday, Wednesday right. morning, six a.m. on audio, six p.m. on YouTube. Eddie, every- uh, 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 someone ask how many podcasts have I jumped on a plane, gone to to spend an hour. And jumped on a plane and come back just just to film one episode. I think in in twenty years I've done it once, busting with the boys. No, there we we definitely did not take that lightly. Like we're very we're very aware that you're you're a busy man. I was surprised that you came down, especially so last minute, because I had texted Gaz. I'm like, hey, you think Dave will come down for episode one hundred? And he's like, I mean, probably shoot him a text. I, somebody was like, hey, shoot him a text or DM him or something like that. And uh, so I shot you that text. You're like, oh yeah, sure. Yeah. That's how I run this ship, Eddie. And then I'm getting fucking steamrolled because I honestly had like a mental slip up because I don't view it. And you're sitting there with your beef kit, happy go lucky. <laughs> you don't even fucking chime in, and this whole thing could have been avoided. Like I said, if I corrected He's you on everything you get wrong, we'd be stuck in mud in. for an hour and a half every every Tuesday. We'd be stuck in but mud. But it wouldn't. You guys are already talking about that topic. All you had to say was bust with the boys. Hey, the boys. Don't forget the boys. Don't let him <laughs> off the hook for having a bad brain. I, I don't. I, I, we we had our we talked it out. We had our conversation. Oh, but come you on. You're going to let it with that, his, his fucking it's bat, a fact, baby. Eddie. No, it's not. All right, Will. Thank you. Listen to Busting with the Boys Wednesday. Let's move it on. <laughs> Subscribe to all the boys. <laughs> all right. um, Dave, mm-hmm. if someone maybe is a free agent and they want to kind of get with a nice fitness program, what's a nice meal prep they should be using? I would say that they should definitely use. Um, trifecta Nutrition. Yeah. Well, I couldn't, it's like Trifecta Nutrition. You have it's 40% weird, off meal prep with code Dave. I usually do great. At the horse track, and even though Saratoga is hit or miss, I know the one thing will always be on track is my tri- nutrition with Trifecta. More chance to hedge my bets because Trifecta is keeping me healthy and delicious meals. I need it, Eddie. All this pizza, I feel gross, tired, sweaty. Trifecta helps. They're delivered straight to the door. I have organic, top-tier ingredients to keep your mind sharp, body shredded, or at least not gross. Uh, check out Trifecta Nutrition, best meal prep on earth. All of Trifecta's meal plans created by chefs, nutritionists, help people get in the best shape of their life. Uh, it makes eating healthy, not suck. All Trifecta's meals, backed by nutrition science, taste great, make it easy to get in the best shape of your life. You don't have to suffer to eat healthy. It's convenient. You save time rather than spending hours meal prepping every week. It's science-backed nutrition. All of Trifecta's meals um, follow scientific nutritional principles. Food quality is the top priority. Fresher fruit, farm-to-fork supply chain, never frozen, organic produce, Fully cooked meals, no waste of time cooking or cleaning, just heat and get healthy. That's why I don't like cooking. Well, a bunch. You're picking it out and then the cleaning. With this, none of it. Shop meal plans and get 40% off with code DAVE. Eat trifectanutrition.com. A lot of different plans there. The keto plans. They got a bunch of other things. Go check it out. Um, okay. We were uh, from that to hot dogs. You were you were crucified over 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 hot dogs this past weekend on your Instagram story. Well, I posted that. I know, I know. So yeah, that was funny. I mean, it was funny. Like w- w- Silvana and I were in a fight, a real fight. I don't, it was over nothing. I don't remember what it was, but she loves hot dogs. She was coming to the Hamptons. I previously had been like, I'll wait to eat, the, uh, eat hot dogs till we get here because I was hungry, and then we got in the fight. 
So it's basically like, guess what? I'm just going to go eat nine fucking million hot dogs right in your face. She had a funny response. She's like, have fun being fat. It was a funny. It, I, we weren't laughing in real time. But when it was over, we both were like, that was a pretty funny like way to try to get each other mad. So I posted it. A lot of people liked it. Are you funny? What? Are you funny, according to her? If she's mad at me, she doesn't. She says I'm not funny. She'll go out of her way to be like, you're not funny. <laughs> like, if I'm like, that was a joke, she's like, that's the problem. You're not funny. But, I, I mean, it's a proven fact I'm funny, so I don't let her get to me. Fair enough. What about um, the, the hurricane? I saw your video. I don't really know what's going on over there. So it didn't come? It, not really where we were. I don't know if it struck other areas differently, but overall I think it was. And this is great. People get mad at me. They're like, oh, would you want the hurricane to kill everybody? No. But it, <laughs> it um, I mean, they were really predicting bad things, and it just never came to fruition. I mean, I don't know, 20-mile-per-hour winds and a couple heavy downpours, but nothing too bad. So the house was no, no, no I had to like put shit away and it didn't matter. I mean, it, it, I left a little thing of sunscreen on a chair. It didn't even blow away. Oh, so you were out there, huh? Put the cushions in the house and everything. Yeah. Oh yeah. How was, what was that like? It wasn't too bad. To no, be honest. no, not too much work, huh? No. What about, uh, how was, how did the golf practice go with Frankie? You know, I was kind of impressed, I'll be honest. Really? Well, I yeah. mean, I, I live streamed one hole yeah. and I parred it. I absolutely from my I, I didn't hit a great tee shot, but it, it was one of those low ones that even though you don't hit it great, it's kinda of like a line drive and it stayed in the middle so it worked. And then I sculled my seven iron and then I, I just hit a dart from eighty yards away within three feet, part it. If I chip from a hundred in like I was the other day, I'll be very tough to beat. Unless this guy's going to go out there and, like, birdie holes lefty, which I don't think he is. So, I, it, it really, I, I think most of this tournament depends on how I play. Did you golf a lot with your mom? Because she was a golf coach, right? She was. My mother was the first female varsity sports coach for men in Massachusetts. She was a varsity male golf coach. Uh, no, I never played a ton. A couple summers maybe I'd get out. Um, once a week or something, but I never, that, that was a long time ago. I mean, when I golfed last week, it's the first time I picked up a club in a year. Do you like it? I get bored quick, but yeah. I, I can play like three or four holes and I'm ready to be out. Yeah. No, I feel you on that. So you weren't like a golf trip with your buddies kind of guy in college. I, I've done a few. We went to like Myrtle beach once, twice, but no, um, I just get bored. I'd rather be at the horse track. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just always uh, – there's some, there's something about it. I know you you obviously you're athletic, but you don't really do anything like that anymore. So just watching yeah, it. Yeah, I, I mean, like, oh, a, a lot of people – a lot of people – it was funny. Like golf experts and golf pros are handicapping my swing. My Everyone says you don't go back all the way. I have weird shoulders, whatever. But I still have Delano DeShield hands. Like I get my hands to work. I've just always been able to do that. And I think a lot of the – people i saw critiquing the swing were like he, he good hips like i opened my hips so even though my swing may not look that like like it's going back all the way i can still hit a golf ball okay despite that because i generate power from my hips again i mean the toy cannon in high school i i just i have power with like sticks in my hands yeah i was i, I came out of that encouraged were you encouraged or were you like oh like that's what i expected there's so much unknown I can also show up in a week and not be able to hit one off the tee, but I have no idea what he's going to do. I don't did know he that comment he on it? Do. No, I don't think he did. No. Oh, no, he did say something, but I forget. I, it, it, you know, he just doesn't operate on the same scale as I do mentally and intellectually, so whatever he said probably wasn't overly funny. Anything from Bryson? No, no, because we're, we're no. pretty close here. I saw someone chirp him like, "Hey, you're gonna be on Dave's bag." I think he's going to the long drive contest, so I'd be, I'd say, slim to none, and Slim just left the building. <laughs> okay. Um, also, you went to the Dave Matthews concert or some type of Dave Matthews Dave performance? Dave Matthews private show, Talk House, and Amagansett, a serious private show. I I put it as the third best concert I've ever been to in my life. People are chirping. I think he could be like the most talented musician alive. It's amazing to watch him. So Lady Gaga, who, so and then him. Lady Gaga won. 
Stone Temple Pilots at the Orpheum 2. Okay. Dave Matthews at Talk House 3. That's my top three I've ever been to. I didn't know you were such a Dave guy. I like Dave a lot, but to see him like an inch away in that type of venue was spectacular. How did you get in? How, what, was the, what was the connect there? Uh, Sirius invited me. So naturally, a lot of people put their tinfoil hats on. You tag Sirius, which is a big deal. Well, um, they invited me. I, I want to put it together that, oh, the station's coming back. I saw a bunch of the people that like, wish we still had you. Um, but I, I certainly wouldn't. I, I said to him, I'm like, I'm surprised I made the cut and you guys still give me the tickets. Like, there's no hard feelings. We like you. I th- maybe they knew I was in the Hamptons anyways. Um, but, yeah, I was surprised when I got the invite. I appreciated it. But that's why I tagged him. So there wasn't an ounce of talk there about like, hey. No, no, no. not really, no. Did it kind of give you the uh, give you a nudge where you're like, all oh, these guys aren't so bad, or what? What do you think? Or well, I nothing? never thought they were that bad. Mm-hmm. It, it's everything I always said. It's like we thought we were worth this, they didn't, and we couldn't come to an agreement. So much to do about nothing. Straight up, they just offered you a ticket, you went, and that's it. Correct. Okay. Um, but before we get into side barstool, obviously, super sad news yesterday about Jimmy Hayes. Stunning. Um, it's just stunning. Um, I had just chirped Jimmy like two days before on the golf course. Being like uh, when I was talking about Kepka, being like, you better watch out. I can end a career like Jimmy did the goalie challenge and then it was out of the league. Obviously joking. And that's one of the great things about Jimmy, his brother, Kevin Bolden, that great sense of humor. Truly one of the most liked people. Everyone just liked him. And it's uh, – it puts shit in perspective, right? You never take anything for granted because you never know when, you know, today's your last day. But super sad story, clearly. Yeah, it really, really came out of nowhere, and it was stunning, stunning. Did it, like, so I guess I'll kind of ask you the same question I asked you about Braintree. Everyone talks about Dorchester when they talk about the hazes. Is there something you could kind of explain with that? Well, Dorchester's Boston. I mean, that's part of Boston. I lived in the nicer part of Dorchester. There's bad areas of Dorchester. There's decent areas of Dorchester. But any time you have I, – I, I read you treated one thing where it's like how a bazillion hockey players grow up playing around the Ponset rink, a rink around Dorchester, and it's like three of them made it to the NHL, two of them were from the same family, and one of them played for the Bruins. Anytime, like, you have a guy, and it's probably any sport, whether it's you grow up in, you know, Chicago or Boston or New York and playing a sport right in the shadow of the professional team, and that then you actually make it to that team, that's something special. Yeah. Well, rest in peace, Jimmy. Thoughts are with the family. Yep. Um, you know. a- any, like, uh, story that stands out with Jimmy in your time? Because we've had some, like, funny – interactions with him over the years like just like kind of sum up how he is like kevin's the same way Derek. yeah i mean we, there's a, i have a couple that stick out so i'm just wondering if you're the same yeah i mean obviously we i did the goalie challenge with him that we posted the other day in in um it was in south boston but i did the florida panthers goalie challenge with him when he was on the panthers the night we were playing like beer pong yeah. That was last year in Nantucket. And then I remember at um, we were at the brewery, and, and he's like, I want to be a janitor. I'm, I want to be the janitor. Uh, Jimmy was saying that. I'm like, you can be our janitor. You can come be the janitor. <laughs> so he's like, I met a janitor in the NHL where I just get garbage goals and latch on as the last man on the roster to a team. I didn't mean your janitor. But then he's quiet for two seconds. He's like, but if that doesn't work out, I, that'd be pretty cool to be the Boston janitor. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy the janitor. <laughs> Jimmy the janitor. Yeah, that we're going to make Jimmy the janitor shirts. Oh. Uh, but, I mean, everybody liked them. There's very few – people and it's the same with kevin like every and and even when i see people that's almost the number one family it's like hey i I think i'm buddies with like uh, like or no like friends of yours it's either always jimmy or kevin hayes they're just very likable affable big like galoots like nice easygoing guys and it doesn't matter they you would never know they're professional athletes outside the fact they're like really we're big dudes but super nice super nice to everybody and just like somebody that you'd you know, easy to talk to. Very funny. Very, very funny guys. Did you talk to Kevin at all? 
sent him a text. I didn't think he'd reply. He did, and it was quick and nice. He's like, Jimmy, loved you. It's like, thanks for the words, but quick. You know, I was surprised yeah. he even replied. Yeah, rest in peace. Horrible. Um, let's do inside Barstool here, Dave. I know you got a meeting. Uh, let's talk about ZipRecruiter before we get to that, though. Yes, ZipRecruiter. We got a hiring spree going on. According to Forbes, Jim, nail salons, hotels, mom and pop stores, more are set to go on epic hiring spree coming months to meet the pent up demand for all these services. Uh, so when you post a job on ZipRecruiter, they send your job to over 100 top job sites, giving you access to their network of millions of job seekers. ZipRecruiter's matching technology scans resumes to find qualified candidates for your open roles and proactively presents them to you. You can easily review recommended candidates, invite your top choices to apply to your job, which encourages them to apply faster. According to ZipRecruiter internal data, uh, jobs where employees invite candidates to apply get two and a half times more candidates. ZipRecruiter's technology is so effective that four out of five employers who use or who post on ZipRecruiter get quality candidates within the first day. Right now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free. At this exclusive web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash Barstool. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash Barstool. B-A-R-S-T-O-O-L. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Barstool. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. All right, live in New Jersey. Yeah, today I'm wearing the thing. I was just doing it. So we're finally, we were soft, uh, soft testing it till we're at, as the time we're filming this, which is Tuesday, went live at noon. When does this come out? tonight so if you haven't made a deposit yet your first deposit if you use the code pizza you up to a hundred dollars so you put in 50 we will give you a free 50 dollar future on the yankees to win the world series i think it's plus 1100 so you get it's a decent strike you also get a free thousand dollar risk-free bet finally new jersey continue to expand and uh for football season we have a lot of cool contest activities stuff coming up so hey jersey i'll say this You'll see a lot of us in Jersey. A lot of our guys are living there. We're going to have a house there. It's super close to the office. You should play with the guys that you'll be seeing in the streets. That's what I'll say. Is it at this point kind of you're just looking to get any kind of foothold there because the other people have been live for so long? Or what's yeah, like the goal? we steal market share. Yeah, they've been there forever. They're entrenched. Um, a lot of people like us. It'll be our crowd. will hopefully play with us because we'll give them bets and props and things that they can't get anywhere else. Yeah. So a lot going to be a lot of different kind of things to kind of get in there. Yep. Um, bet the BEC, by the way. Uh, we have very cool overs club stuff coming out. We have a contest that'll be coming out that we're going to announce for football season. That's super cool. So we have some cool stuff, some cool, cool projects coming up. I saw some tubular lab some type of graphic that you retweeted that were like a top u.s sports creator at this point yeah that's impressive yeah there's like wwe on there there's a bunch of other yeah. things i don't know if um, someone could pull it up can i uh can i tell you a quick story that you'll find funny and who knows this may get deleted <laughs> yeah of course so i got this text from Silvana today um, <laughs> and her friends were over my house like a couple weekends ago just hanging out and one of them it was like Cole took a barstool sweatshirt I have a ton of them there and brought back to LA Silvana sends me this text exchange this is her friend who sent it to her tell me how I was hanging out with some of my friends at the Faze house I was wearing my barstool hoodie because they live right by me so I'm in literal sweats Homeboy went off on me saying he used to work there. He wanted to give me a new hoodie and all. I was like, whoa, saying he hates Dave and all this shit. He wanted me to take off the hoodie. Mooj. Uh, don't, aren't you, are you friendly with the FaZe guys through BFFs or anything? Yeah, I'm friendly with, I don't know, with the exception of Mooj. Yeah, I know yeah. Banks who fucking started it is a Boston guy that I am friendly with. Mo who knows what Mooj tells the lower guys, but it, this was just Mooj. This is Mooj. Yeah, but isn't it like, yo, Banks, like, what's going on? I don't think this? Banks is hanging out with Mooj. And if he yeah. wasn't heard that, I'd be like, what's your problem with Dave? And then Mooj would probably say, well, I worked there for like five seconds to call her daddy and then said I wanted to stay, then quit, said Dave was racist, even though I have a million racist tweets. I think, and he, I think he broke up with Sophia, too. I don't know if they're back together. Because the, like, Palestine-Israeli conflict, like, I think he just doesn't like me because I'm Jewish. 
That would be my guess. I, I did see that they there was some there seemed to be some tension between him and Sophia over not her not making a comment about that conflict. Yeah, yeah. I so mean, I don't know. Uh, but imagine like a girl that you don't even know just wears a Barstool sweatshirt like, and you're like, take that off. You can't wear it. That guy's going to be one of the biggest douchebags who ever lived. Granted, credit to me, I called him a douchebag to his face the first time like he was in there. And I'm like, the only reason you're here because I'd never fucking hire your ass because I can tell you're a douchebag is because Alex is vouching for you and says, we need to hire you. So that's why I'm hiring you. Maybe that's why he doesn't like me. Turns out I was right. Remember that time that he was playing like PS4, like Fortnite in over at his desk and you like walked over to him you're like what are you doing he's like i don't know i don't really have much to do he was just playing fortnite in like the middle of (laughs) he he, there's very few people who are universally hated i think by every single all 250 employees here he's one i don't think you're gonna have one person in this entire office stick up for him but i mean who cares like still i'm not gonna like you don't even know this girl what who cares that she's wearing a sweatshirt just shut up yeah, to, to, to make a scene like that is something. He's and when to. you're the fucking asshole. Like, he's like, oh, he's racist, quit. It's like, dude, you don't even, we've said five words to each other. He's still got that grudge, I guess. Piece huh? of shit. What a piece of shit. Speaking of that, you did have another Instagram story saying that Cooper said, or she said that you're going to see her in Vegas in September. Yeah, TBD, we do have a trip. That's a private something, but I don't know that's going to happen. Hmm. What's that about? <laughs> this guy. <laughs> I could ask. You yeah, could, yeah, I think yeah. you got him. I, I, I think you got I'm him. not going to answer that. You could choose not to share, but I, I could I ask. choose not to share. I how about how about how about like uh, how, nope. how about a crumb of a nope. crumb for the people? Nope. No, nope. what, what you're not going to give me a crumb of a crumb. There's no crumbs. I don't even think this is going to happen on the 15th. Oh. So, no. Damn. I remember when you used to give crumbs of crumbs, Dave. Nope. No crumbs. Hut again. Hut. Hut. Like the last crumb Hut. you gave. Oh. Hut. <laughs> <laughs> no uh, crumbs. No crumbs. Uh, all right. No crumbs. Thanks for no crumbs. The people are going to be upset. They got no crumbs. But, you know, uh, Hubs apologizes to Yankees fans about crumb. what I may give in a crumb. Go ahead. Uh, Hubs apologizes to Yankee fans for shirt delay. Welker. <laughs> Welker. Worst to ever do it. Whoa. Have you, th- do you have any more information on that or that's all you know? With no, Hubs it's too? Welker. Well, it, it, I'm not going to cry uh, Argentina for Hubs for one t-shirt. I've been dealing with this for two decades. <laughs> to be Mr. fair, Welker. too, it, there's a lot of t-shirts going through. I mean, we just sold a bunch for the. Chicago Police Memorial, so I don't know. No, he, 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 whoa. <laughs> um, speaking of that, part of my take raises money for the guy who makes wings out of a Knights of Columbus. What a story. Yeah, I saw that. I retweeted that story. Apparently makes great wings, and they need a storefront. So I love the cause. I love Buffalo. That guy was a legend. I don't know how yep. much you watched of it, but unbelievable. I always wanted to go to Buffalo. He makes me want to go that much more. Buffalo's great. Um, from friends to foes, Nadu and Mintz, a little exchange of words on Twitter. I saw that. I mean, Nadu Nadu is a contentious guy. He doesn't know when, like, he's done with me. He just did it with Mintz. He's just not good at keeping, like, potential allies close to him. That's about as, like, is that as mad as, like, Mintz can get? It was That's him a little he, feisty. Mince, I know yeah, it's... Yeah, Mintz doesn't get mad. Mintz, although you don't want to make him mad now. He's working out with Billy Football. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying that. That's really funny. Um, but Mintz is, yeah, like, I know it's through text, so it's kind of hard to decipher, but that seemed a little, yeah. little juiced up there. Yep. Uh, also contentious. I saw Thrill Ride and Minahan are in some kind of beef. Are you caught up on that? Yeah, hands off. Paul texted me. He's like, Minahan asked... To talk, I mean, Thrill Ride asked to talk to Gaz. He's like, would you get involved? Like, nope. These are, I don't even know the backstory. But when you hear Minahan, Cullahane, Thrill Ride, I'm out. Gaz, I know you're in if you'd like to speak, Gaz. 
No, I, I, I actually asked Dave, like I texted him, like, what would you do to handle this? Because Thrilly Dilly was getting silly and he was sending me DMs asking like to talk about some stuff. And I, I actually have background because I like listen to Kirk's show. So I know where it was coming from. And like when you're dealing with Kirk and his crazy fans and his crazy self and then you got Thrilly, he's kind of off the rails a little bit. I just, I'm stay a little away, bit. Stay Thrill away. Ride was like pay me a hundred grand or something to like fight. It's like, what? Yeah. I think Tank, I think Hank talked to him for like a half an hour about it. Just I, to like, I, I just wanted nothing to do with it. Like yeah. I was getting tagged, and I didn't even pretend to try to learn what yeah. it was about. Yeah. What is there a reason why you're staying out of it? Because you like both parties, or because you just don't want to get into it, or what? I don't know. I haven't talked to Thrill Ride in forever, so I'm not. I don't know enough, but I know this: if you put yourself in the middle of a Minahan fight, you'll be in the fight. You don't. You don't just. <laughs> tiptoe into a Minahan dispute like if you're gonna get involved in it know that you're gonna be like in a royal rumble and you in your people are gonna get thrown into turnbuckles and yeah. into the eighth row and you're gonna get eye gouged and you get nobody to blame it's no hold no big, big fair funny your dead dog he's yeah, gonna start no, doing everything no holds barred that you, if you enter that ring you're in the ring you're in it you don't buy a ticket to watch a Minahan fight you buy a ticket and you're in the fight Correct. There's no yes. bystanders. There's no rules. It's the original no holds barred. <laughs> it really is. Um, a little bit more. I don't know how serious this is either, but have you been following the Caleb Trent thing, the golf match? I know I've heard whispers about them playing each other. I thought at first Caleb didn't want to play. Then I thought I saw Trent didn't want to play. I don't know. That's as much as I know. They don't want to play each other or something. Yeah, I think Caleb had challenged him to a match, and Trent was like, I don't really want to do it. He tweeted it, so it was all public. And it was like, I, if I win, I, you know, I beat a guy who just started. If I lose, and I get lost to a guy who just started. So he was kind of maybe concerned didn't, about didn't that. I don't know. Did they just start? No, Trent's been playing for a while. There, but there was a lot of talk in the office, I'm not going to say names, on, on being like, it's interesting that Caleb's now challenging Trent when Trent has a successful video series, it's doing really, really well. The brave now, now Caleb may be like jumping in there to like clout chase a little bit Ooh. of what Trent's got going on. And Trent may not seem that he has any upside in playing him in a sense. Cause if he wins, it's like, Oh, you beat the guy who just started. If you lose, it's the guy who, you know, but I, I, mean, my, my, I always thought good even Trent played, he just kind of started trying to get good. Maybe there could be something to do that. I know it's serious. Fucking I mean, crushed. Caleb, has played more golf than I've played in my life by a mile already. Yeah, I, that series crushed. So good, good on Trent. I don't know if you noticed that either. Yeah. But I'm sure you get, it's, it's TV two in the back cave. You got there we're watching all our like, content. Like, I think it was like 230 thousand views or something around there per video, right? Yeah, that's good. What? Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna play though, Am which I, right? I think will be which should be good. Am I right? I'm Something sure. like that. We're looking it up right now. So then, three fifteen, two thirty. Yeah. So I was in the neighborhood. Three eighty five. Yeah. yeah. So it looks like I'm paying a little more attention than. Uh, Mr. You're getting credit for. Mi yeah, Mr. Eddie thought. Credit to you, Dave. Yeah. Credit to you. Um, credit to you. Uh, Who do you think will win that match? I saw Caleb was trying to break 90, so I would assume he would. That's he said, a he, said he, he said he did 86, but it wasn't on video. Yeah, and then he did it and got 91. Mm -hmm. Hmm, how do I know that? Um, <laughs> so it, it, that would make me think Caleb would because there's a big difference between shooting 90 and 100. Is it too late to add it to the undercard for a Portnoy Kepka? Why would I want it to divert any attention from me? Team guy. Yeah, you know, company. It's too long. Play. Are you going to do like eight hours of golf? Just curious. Uh, have, are you paying attention to Dana Beers? He's doing a juice cleanse. I saw something where he had orange juices. People like it's too much sugar or something. <laughs> All right. You're paying a little more attention than I thought. I though. always pay attention, Eddie. I, if you ask me about dumb stuff, I don't, I don't have time to pay attention to dumb stuff. <laughs> And then lastly, um, ZBT, great, great causes, chaps doing something for the people Was coming over. Was an Afghan interpreter? Yep. Kate had a nice blog, so it's nice to. Are you, is someone, no, someone's feeding you the outline. I bet no, you that's not. it. No, they're not. Nah, it's all him. 
Kareem, don't bullshit me. If, I'm not. I'm like 10 feet away from him, I swear. The, the sheets are all the ads right there. Look, he's holding them up. There's the proof. He likes to naturally react. He doesn't no, want you got shoots. a fucking earpiece in, Dave. I, I don't see. have an earpiece, Eddie. I pay attention. I have an ear to the grind here, Eddie. Are you back? What's the deal? We're, we're, we're done here. Are you I, I back? I haven't left. <laughs> Are I you staying? Left. I've been working. I've been doing these fucking podcasts. Pizza. I've been working my fucking dick to the bone. This has been the worst vacation somebody who's worth $100 million has ever had it. Ever. I guarantee you, nobody is vacation less at their net worth than I have. That ever. is kind of odd, because that, that is true. <laughs> this is the worst July, August you've had. Horrible. You're on E, and you're going into, like... I'm on E. I'm, and you're going I'm exhausted. I'm feeling like my apartment's a disaster because there's suitcases. I'm going there. I'm going here. I have two horses, Eddie, at Travers Day, Saratoga. Two grade ones. I own both. I don't even know I have time to watch it, Eddie. Because I have rough and rowdy on Friday. I'm going to Jake Paul Woodley on Sunday. I'm getting ridden like a goddamn horse around here. I'm getting whipped around the track. <laughs> what, how does this end then? What's gonna be, is there going to be a breaking point in like October, November? Me, because this whole company is going to kill me. And then Moog can sit around and be like, you is the worst. It's like who's here for fucking three seconds. <laughs> telling... telling like my girlfriend's friend, she can't wear a bar stool. I, I wish you knew the background on this cock. <laughs> Did she take it off? I don't know what happened. I, I just found this out. I was like, when I saw it, I'm like, what is this face? Because I am friends with the face. It's like, oh, fucking Mooch. Just keep your <laughs> mouth shut. There's Are a you reason, upset? Mooch, you keep going company to company and getting in fights. Alex Cooper, who's one of your best friends, hates you. Sophia, you picked her side. You were supposed to be hates you. I hate you. Everywhere you go, people hate you. At some point, you got to look in the mirror. Is the reason everyone hates me everywhere I go because the people stink everywhere or I'm the common thread that people hate? Like, I was not even going to, I'm over it, but the girl wears a sweatshirt I gave her and you're like, take it off. Way to make someone fucking uncomfortable. I'm a fucking loser. Are you, what, do you know your role yet for the Jake Paul fight? Yeah, me and Big Cat are on the call. Like, Not the play-by-play -play where Barstool tail the tape. They'll cut to us like four to six times during the night. Okay, so if we order the fight, you'll be you. You guys oh, yeah. will be in the mix. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. All right, Dave. I'm a little concerned. I got to be honest. I would be too. This is supposed to be my vacation month. I didn't have <laughs> dick. <laughs> I'm concerned. I'm concerned. So hopefully we'll see. Now Rico and Stu, uh, the weekly schedule gets a little more compacted. Um, so, all right, that's, that's today's show. Uh, thank you, Dave. Good performance. All things considered, you said you weren't feeling good. I'm just exhausted. That was that a dramatic way to end it. That was a dramatic way to end it. We'll see you next week.